So in the last video, we installed Winter CMS on our development environment, which I was using ZAMP. You could have been using WAMP or Laravel or I mean Laragon or MAMP. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a development environment to install Winter CMS on, it's perfectly fine. So this is the back end. As you saw in the in the little demonstration in the last video, is the front end and the back end. And the front end is pretty much, let me go to here, preview website. This is pretty much the front end. So what is the differences? If you've never dealt with MVC before, if you've never dealt with MVC structures, the difference between a front end and back end when it comes to websites is mostly a front end by principle is mostly for display purposes and a back end by principle is mostly for how you say the actual calculations, the actual inputs, all that kind of stuff. And I will demonstrate in detail the difference between these two to further illustrate the difference. So let's look at this front end. As you can see, it's very plain. There's nothing really going on to it. Uh, it's just a demo page. And when we go to the back end, you see where we can change this into something that is of our desire. Remember, October CMS or winter CMS in this case is a rapid application development framework. So it's, it has things to help us make sites faster. So I got to go to the back end because that's where all the stuff is. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to front end theme. And in front end theme, I'm going to look at this, which is the demo theme that you're seeing at the front. You can create your own theme from scratch or you can use a theme that's available in the marketplace. And this is not the winter CMS marketplace, which is still in development. This is the October CMS marketplace. So anything you can use in October CMS, you can use here. And what are themes? Themes are basically the layouts, the partials, the components of the front side of the website. So I want a theme a custom theme from the October CMS team. And I'll go for a, let's see. I think that's good enough. That's a good enough theme. And ladies and gentlemen, there are many themes that you can use, that you can start your process with. There are many. Great, it's all downloaded. Perfect. So let me go back to my front end theme. There it is. I'm going to activate it. And then when I come to the front end here and refresh, as you can see, it's changed into a nice looking Bootstrap 5 template. And I can use this template for anything that I want to do. As you can see, it's got everything that I need when it comes to uh, displaying my stuff. Great animations. It's perfect for what I need to do. It's all the stuff I need. So let's get started now. We've got a front end theme and our website looks nice. And we can get to work in making it better. As you can see, when we go back to the back end, here the back end, the theme is there and everything is that's so nice and all that, but we don't necessarily see how this theme is made or the code unless we use a text editor or an IDE. So we're going to actually look at the code of the front end and the code of the back end to get a firm understanding on how Tumblr CMS is doing this stuff. And then we're going to implement our own uh, uh, functions and we're gonna we're going to uh, edit this theme to be something that will be suitable for us. So I'm going to use PHP Storm, which is my go-to text editor or IDE. Uh, 
uh, if it's already opened, which is it, which it is, I'm already working on other projects. So I'm just gonna close those. And then I will open that project, open. And I'll go to, I'm looking for learning, which is not here. And let me just go there. You go to HD Docs, learning should be there. So if I come back to here, yeah, it's updated. It's a bug that's in PHP Storm. I don't know if they fixed it in the newer versions, but for now, yeah, it's 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 quite annoying. All right, and then, yeah, let's save this window. Wanna start off from scratch. Okay, we've got our learning. And isn't that nice? They show a nice little thing about Winter CMS there. All the people involved, all the information that you need. And then let us continue on here. So now we see, okay, we've got Vendors, themes, tests, storage, plugins, modules, convict, bootstraps, and git pod. So with themes, this is where all our front end development will be. As you can see, we have demo, which was the very first thing we saw when we installed Winter CMS. And then we've got PQURG space bootstraps five, which was the theme we implemented there. And then if we open this theme, we have assets, layouts, pages, partials. So in partials, we have the footer and header. And in the footer, we can see that this is what will appear there. In the header, we see this is what appears there. This is the nav bar and stuff like that. And then when we go to pages, we've got the index. which is the first thing we saw. We've got the contact, we've got about, and we've got 404, we've got services, all that. And then when you go to layout, we've got a default layout. And this is where you put uh, your CSS and uh, your, your JS for the layout of your website. Because as you can see here, with the use of Twig, we are importing styles, we are importing pages, and we are importing scripts into these pages here. So if I go to index, index is a page. And because it's a page, as you can see, we're importing, as you can see, we're importing like partial header, and this is a partial, and we're importing the header there. And this is, this is Twig by the way, and you'll get to be familiar with Twig the more we code. But for now, this might not make sense to you. It's like, okay, what the heck is this? What does this line mean? And this partial, okay, this looks like a blade templating if you're used to Laravel. And it's very similar to blade templating, by the way, but it's components. It's not actually blade templating. It is a form of templating, but it's made by components. All right, so that is, oh yeah, the, of course we have the CSS, the fonts, the images, the IMGs, GIS, everything you see here in the front page is in the assets folder. All the stuff you see here that demonstrates nice looking like images there and images there, the, the clients and logos there, it's all in the assets folder. Now, let us, let us check that when we make changes to pages index, it will reflect on our local. So we have this Bootstraps 5 multi-purpose website template. I will just say here, learning I am learning stuff yay
and then I'll save that. And then I'll come back here, go to the very top, look at this, refresh, and voila, you can see how easily you can change this theme to suit your needs. And look, I just did that. Very simple, very easy. So I'll just go back to the theme, look for where the button is. And I know this is the button, obviously uh, uh, a hyperlink. And I wanna change this to learn more. And then I am going to come back, refresh, and it's changed to learn more. So as you can see, if you know what you're doing, if you are very well versed in HTML and CSS, you don't have to be well versed in JavaScript, but if you're well versed in HTML and CSS, you can pretty much do whatever you want here. Everything is set up for you. You just make a few changes to suit your needs. And then voila, you have a site that's available to use. Now notice there's no database implementation anywhere. Not as of yet. We're just looking how the site looks like and how it works. All right. So let us continue on. This is the basics, by the way. These are just the basics. We're gonna get into heavy code later on, but this is just to get you up to scratch with the best parts of October CMS. So I've stopped, let me stop here with the front side and let's go to the back end. We're done with the front end. Let's go to the back end and just take a look of what's happening here. So the back end to access it, you don't have to, you don't actually go to themes. To access the back end, you actually go to plugins. Plugins are what make the back end shine. And as you see, the more plugins that we implement, the better our stuff will be. For example, we have this, which is a, how you say, a plugin for the demo of Winter CMS. And you can't really do much with this. You can implement it, uh, change it as much as you like. It makes use of controllers and models, which you don't see here yet. Uh, but the more you code, the more the controllers and models show. And the functions of a controller and a model will always appear here and as a side menu. So these are the main menus, these are the side menus. Now to get to the settings is not as simple when it comes to the code base because the core code base of Winter CMS has uh, a multi-layer of extensions and a way that uh, everything connects together. It's a very complex, uh, how you say, complex structure. Whereas if you make your own plugins and uh, you have an understanding on how to make plugins and functions, and you have an understanding of how the structure works, it will be much easier for you to understand how settings are made here and how you can create your own settings and stuff like that. But we want to go with the basics first and then get to the advanced stuff later. So I'm going to create a function for here. And I think this video stretched on long enough for us to uh, continue on with the back end in another video. So thanks for joining me. See you next time.